For today's cup of coffee, we have tales of misery and woe, in addition to a weird story. <laughs> it's just been one of those days. Oh my God, it seems like they're all one of those days. Youngest kid had a worse day than I. A little while ago, he discovered that a cat had either barfed or shat in, in his shoe. shoe. <laughs> It was in my shoe. Now, I tell you, that's when you know you have had a bad day. That's hard to top. Oh. It really is. The, f <laughs> the fucking element wouldn't work in the dryer. Yeah, the, the piece, of, the part that we had ordered for the dryer did not work. God love him, poor Omega. Has, had, he discovered that there was more electrical fuckery that was done to the house like everything else. Because it was all fucked up. Well, you know. <laughs> I, Whoever I'm built this house wanted one. to set their asses on fire. I, no, they're not they not wanted to they set wouldn't. our asses yeah, on fire. Let those who come behind us uh, have to deal with the mess. Seems to be the American way. Anyhow. Yeah, the dream of <laughs> This one is odd. Now, the one about the Vrills yesterday was very odd. Mm. And it encapsulated most of, uh, you know myth, legend, whatever you want to call it about this conspiracy. Is it any and all of the above? Yes. So this second one also comes again from Jellyfish News, which is John B. Wells news site. All the descriptions will be, uh, the links will be in the description box rather. And he is citing it's from Auric Media and uh, this was Pinned November the twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. Can you even use that as? It's it's not. They're not pinned. These are keyboarded. It was keyboarded November twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. It was documented uh, by Blogman, the blacksmith of truth. Stick of truth. That, that is a cool name, anyhow. Uh, Donald Marshall, real <laughs> lizard agenda. Now, this one was, when I first read it, I was a little, eh. Mm. You know, you get that Spock raised eyebrow thing going. It's like, hmm, hmm. Yeah. And then it got to where it was more so. So this is, but it's still worth mentioning because I want people to do their own research on this. There will be links, if I can remember, that I have not used that were even more confusing you, you can't even imagine. I mean, there was pages and pages and pages of this shit. So, anyhow, I will include those. And if somebody else is really bored and really wants to go into it. One of them was like, I can't remember how many. It would have been like eight or nine pages. Mm. And then, then their part two, they basically discount everything that they said in the first one. Yeah! Why? Because this is odd and, and not in a happy way. Now, we believe that there is such a thing as healthy skepticism. Mm -hmm. we, we do. It's not like we believe every single thing. We will listen to whatever. But, you know, we've also had skepticism. rather it's extensive healthy. background with people that have severe mental illness. So that sort of skepticism is healthy it, it is it is there is such a thing as healthy skepticism so take this one with a large grain of salt take this with a salt block there you go run down to your local tractor supply Football get you one salt. of those 50 pound you know salt blocks if you need get the mineral blocks it depends if you're deficient or not those good horse salt blocks <laughs> absolutely and oh I forgot to check the horses Saw a block last night. Well, well, we were at her house. Yeah, we'll we'll get that here. Anyhow, Donald Marshall, this individual, mm -hmm. we'll get to that towards the end.
He claims that there is a secret that has been kept by members of the Illuminati for more than 70 years. A secret of such great importance as to affect the lives of every man, woman, and child on the the face of the planet. On the flavor flavor. Uh, Right. (laughs) The flavor flavor. (laughs) Marshall states that his mission in life is to share this secret with the world so that all can know the truth and plan for the future. A uh, little melodrama. He just makes he makes Brent Swanser, God love him, Brent is just to the point mm. as compared to Dave. Maybe, what if it is Brent Swanser? What if he is <laughs> this is an man? Alter, alter ego. Oh my God, well, that would be great. Anyhow, <laughs> All right, to fully understand this secret, now this will sort of recap what we previous cup was, uh, be necessary to return to the events of post-war Germany following the end of World War II, where in 1923 Hitler was named the leader of the new Nazi party. Does that mean there was an old Nazi party? Yes, so. Failed, following a failed attempt to overthrow the federal government, Hitler was arrested for treason. While awaiting trial in Landsberg Prison, he read Bul- uh, Bulwer Lighton's, I think it's Bulwer instead of Bulwer, anyhow, okay. Lighton's 1871 novel, Vril, The Power of the Coming Race, uh, which was about a master race of beings who called themselves Vrilia. And doing the fact checking thing, ha ha ha. Ha ha. If I don't drop my papers because I got 15 addendums. All right, Edward Bulwer Lytton. This comes from Wikipedia, reliable source, but on this it's all right. Loves it. Uh, was actually Edward George Earl Lytton, Bulwer Lytton. Anybody who's got that many names, We're you sorry. know, is their suspect. Just a little bit. Yeah. He was an English writer and politician. Now, his detention of writer Rosina Bulwer Lytton, whom he had married in an insane asylum, provoked a public outcry. Now, see, that was written a very awkward way. He yeah. married this woman. He married poor Rosina, had her ass committed, and then he went on and, you know, did whatever he did. Mm. So, this is dude's claim to fame. I guess so. Other than the pathetic. other than the fact that he did come up with the term, it was a dark and stormy night. That's sad. He was the dude. He, he was, was that dude. That dude. <laughs> so anyhow, but I would say, and, and oh, this other woman, woman was a this. His wife was a writer. Hmm. How do we know that she did that he didn't steal her work? We don't know. Right. We don't know shit about shit. Anyhow, so this shit. this was dude that Hitler read his uh, you know book and took it to heart. In the book, it says they claim to be the descendants of the inhabitants of ancient Atlantis, with access to an extraordinary for, uh, force called Vril, an unlimited source of energy that supplies all their needs and can be controlled at will. Hitler believed the novel to be true, and once made Chancellor of Germany. He would send teams uh, of spelunkers into caves and mines all over Europe searching for the Vrilia. He dispatched regular expeditions to Asia, especially Tibet, where Nazi explorers made significant connections with influential Tibetan lamas who had expert knowledge about the underground tunnel and cavern systems around the world. Legend was that these Tibetan lamas guarded a secret entrance to the inner world known as the Red Door, hidden within a um, Potala palace in the mountain of uh, Lhasa. Okay. Cats. Throw oh, the God. cat out. Once a Nazi-Tibetan alliance was formed, the lamas agreed to share with them that for centuries that they had been helping to hide an indigenous race of lizard living deep within the planet since prehistoric times known as Vril lizards. It seems that these lizards knew the location of the abandoned mili- of, of an abandoned military base dating back from the time of Atlantis filled with ancient aircraft, weaponry, and technology hidden within the tunnels and caverns of Antarctica. It always goes back to Antarctica. It truly does. 
Now, the lizards supposedly had no use for the tech, but they were willing to trade for something else that they wanted. And, of course, that was to be able to consume fresh human flesh. Too bad that they couldn't have just, I mean, cadavers, man, they, they could have just, you know, soylent green everybody. Yeah. And so a deal was made, supposedly. The Nazis got the ancient Atlantean tech and sold out the human race. But according to Marshall... This is not the first time real lizards have interacted with humans. He claims that for centuries, royalty, powerful heads of state, and trusted religious leaders around the world have kept a secret pact with these malevolent lizards. World leaders would receive valuable resources buried deep within the planet, such as gemstones, gold, and other minerals. And in exchange, these leaders would conceal all evidence of the real from the surface population so no one would learn of their existence. In addition to helping them hide, real lizards required that they be provided with a steady supply of humans to concern. Well, somebody owes somebody back payment because oh, this yeah. shit's all over the internet. So yeah. somebody didn't do somebody. their job. Somebody getting fired. Okay, the real again supposed to be a parasitic race yes. and had the biological ability to invade the human body. And Marshall warns that we've already been invaded. We just don't know it. Marshall claims that the Illuminati body snatch many people in every country all over the world. They sometimes choose victims from incarcerated prisoners or long-term patients in hospitals and medical facilities. Anywhere they can have easy access to people, they will body snatch and replace them with a real host. Anybody can be body snatched, and according to Marshall, he's even seen this done to young children. Ooh. Yes, let's pour a little bit of paranoia. Even yeah. more. Yeah. Marshall claims that all loyal families within the Illuminati are expected to offer one of their children to be replaced by a real host. Well, I have no doubt that they offer their some of their children's up, but I don't oh, know yeah. that it's necessarily to the real Allegedly. Allegedly. According to Marshall, the Illuminati utilize this unique parasitic ability of the lizards to further their own dark agenda. They are able to remove those resistant to their goals without anyone even noticing. And with real body snatching, the troublesome person is now replaced with an Illuminati spy, infinitely loyal and willing to report back everything they see or hear. Mm. Well, hell, we, we eat up with these things, if that's the case. I mean, seriously. Right? It is crucial to understand real lizard psychology. Since Marshall maintains that all real lizards want to be human, they admire human intelligence and the beautiful human form. They want to crawl out from the deep underground into the light and walk unnoticed amongst humanity. However, they are not human and have no capacity to feel human emotions. Mm. All right. As malevolent lizards, they enjoy causing pain and suffering. You know, I don't know that any lizard, I, the, usually any animal, if you it'll react, it'll protect itself. No, they don't just go out and go. Hmm, I'm going to numb on that one for a minute. I'm going to chew that thing's leg <laughs> off. People will do that, but not lizards. Marshall um, reveals that real hosts are responsible for much of the senseless crimes and spree killings that occur. However, real hosts are excellent mimics and make convincing humans. And since there is no way to detect the presence of a real host, except with an MRI scan of the brain, most members of the Illuminati pretend to like the lizards and are friendly to real hosts, since no one is ever certain if they are talking to a host or a human. Eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, according to Marshall, prehistoric real li lizards have been body snatching humans throughout history. He claims that they are, in part, responsible for the destruction of Atlantis. Marshall wow, reports that, that. that real hosts had body snatched and infiltrated their way into positions of power throughout Atlantean culture where they destroyed themselves with advanced weaponry, causing cataclysmic flooding and earthquakes. 
Marshall asserts that real lizards often infiltrate human societies by targeting individuals in the ruling class, royalty, or priesthood. Once they are in positions of power, real lizards attempt to convince the humans to worship them as either gods or demons, something to be feared and obeyed without question. As gods, real lizards would demand human sacrifices as a show of loyalty and devotion, and as demons, they would be deeply feared. It says old legends warn travelers against going into certain haunted caves and mountains, and to beware when darkness falls, as this was the time when demons would creep about, stealing babies and livestock. When real lizards would body snatch a victim, the person was later said to be demon-possessed and uh, various means would be attempted to drive the demons out. Okay, and so this is, we've got a similar phenomenon going out. There's nothing else that exists except the real. There's no ghosts, there's no, no cryptids, no anything else. It's only real. This is like there are no diseases that exist currently to mankind except one. And we'll leave it there. Allegedly. <laughs> Since many cultures around the world attempted to limit real lizard infestation, the fuck and Marshall says most, at some point, start sharpening pointy sticks mm. in order to try to get rid of it. It says, for example, the Hopi Indian culture successfully drove off the real lizards while the ancient Anasazi Indians of New Mexico were forced to leave behind their elaborate uh, cliff dwellings in order to relocate far away from the nearby real infested caves. Okay, dude should have watched our cup of coffee uh, a couple of days back about the Hopi and the ant people. Mm -hmm. So then he would, maybe he could have edified himself. He says that some royal families kept real lizards as pets. What? Mm. And use them to instill fear in those not showing the proper loyalty to the crown. Some world religious leaders also knew the lizards had secret alliances with them and agreed to help them. In the 1940s, a secret pact was forged between the Nazis and the lizards, making them mutual allies. Conditions of the pact required directing tremendous resources to assist the real lizards, including the building of deep underground military bases worldwide. This would allow the lizards a way to interact directly with humans, which in turn would permit the massive government-sponsored body snatching so prevalent around the world today. Okay, now let's go back to what he said, that they wanted to live above ground and do all this bunch of stuff, and that's why they were stealing the bodies. Okay, they are, if they're that successful, why the hell they need the tunnels? Who knows? Mm-hmm. It's, 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 you talk about holes in this story that you could drive a Mack truck through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if we can assume that all this is true, that body-snatching malevolent lizards have infiltrated human society and are replacing us one by one without raising any alarm, one might ask, wouldn't someone try to tell people and save humanity? According to Marshall, President Ronald Reagan tried to warn the public on numerous occasions from 1985 to 1988. In an important speech to the United Nations General Assembly on September 21, 1987, at the height of the Star Wars space race with Russia, Reagan mused, quote, In our obsession with the antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. I occasionally think how quickly our differences would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside of this world. And yet I ask, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our people than war and the threat of war? End quote. I've used that as far as like opening uh, the closing quotes and stuff quite often. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, Marshall states that the Illuminati forgave Reagan's comments at first, but when he continued to talk about aliens living amongst us, they, quote, blew his mind and called it Alzheimer's, end quote. Oh, I thought that it was Hank Hinkley that tried to blow his mind. Anyhow, Marshall uh, encourages us to remember the ultimate real lizard agenda, 
which he claims has remained unchanged for centuries to infiltrate human society and take over the planet. Marshall warns us to act quickly to spread the news as anyone can be body snatched. Now, I've got Invasion one other of the thing. body snatchers. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they're saying that that was true. Mm, pod people. Now, this comes from Donald Marshall Revolution. Loves it. And I will include this link in the description box about Donald Marshall. These are the accounts of Donald Marshall, a former Illuminati insider turned internet whistleblower. We came across Donald Marshall's online post in late 2011. 11, 11, 11, detailing his first-hand accounts. Hey, after reading all that shit, it's a wonder that I can say anything. It's that much drillville makes you thirsty. (laughs) All right, anyhow, detailing his first-hand accounts with a powerful global organization known as the Illuminati. He describes their secret involvement in such criminal acts as murder, kidnapping, torture, rape, child abuse, and child exploitation. As a victim himself of the Illuminati, Marshall details his own experiences of torture, kidnapping, and abuse at the hands of this large global conspiracy, reaching shocking levels of depravity. Marshall exposes many major Illuminati political players, such as Queen Elizabeth, her husband Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Charles and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Don't be picking on Putin. He also names <laughs> many other world leaders, politicians, and famous celebrities secretly involved. Many of Marshall's claims can be substantiated by events cataloged by public and private organizations, such as Child Abuse Recovery, a division of Trauma Research Center Incorporated, and the International Common Law Court of Justice in Brussels, which found Queen Elizabeth and her husband, Prince Philip, guilty in the disappearance of 10 native children from the Kamloops, it's the A-M-L-O-O-P-S, mm. Kamloops, Kamloops, Indian Residential School Fruit in Loops. British Columbia on October 10, 1964. Donald Marshall Revolution is an unofficial and unauthorized website created to help spread information about critical issues of global public interest and concern. And supposedly the opening statement that he had was, quote, my name is Donald Marshall. I've been cloned, end quote. Now, even within this, I've been cloned, period. within this, uh, while oh. certain uh, these organizations such as child abuse recovery and stuff like that very much I- I'm sure that those places do exist does it have specific records about this specific individual and that's highly unlikely that they did or that they could be released because these are juveniles and you don't mm. so anyhow well. songs supposedly that were written by Donald Marshall and the groups that he was very much involved with, they included Foo Fighters, the song My Hero and the Pretender, Madonna, Metallica's Justice for All, Iron Maiden, ACDC, Queensryche, uh, Kenny Rogers' song Lady, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, I bet Billy Corgan would have a field day with this because he... Very intelligent person, very well spoken person. Mm-hmm. Now, he does, as far as uh, you know, the paranormal, supernatural, yeah, he's into that. But I would like to know his take on Donald, you know, Donald Marshall. Yeah. Also involved, Rihanna, Heart, the song These Dreams, Nine Inch Nails, Happiness in Slavery, uh, Nirvana, the song Aneurysm. Now, I think that dude has got delusions of grandeur. There's also some of this if you're really interested in what he has to say for himself. And if you watch his videos and, and say, hey, you, Orlando, you need to go back and you need to really watch this and uh, edify yourself about Mr. Marshall, then I'd be willing to do that. Mm-hmm. Because as much of this stuff that, as I have read over the past couple of weeks... Uh, when it involves him, and I think that he is sup- one of the main sources that they're focusing on, which is to everybody's bad about the vrills. Never put all your vrills in one basket. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no. I 
think the man's on, on this side of bat shit crazy. Anybody can sit there and make up these horrible things, you know, delusions. Mm-hmm. Because we have a world, like we don't have enough shit going on that people's got to make up drama. Too much shit. You know, and I don't know if it's that dopamine receptor or the serotonin thing that somebody has to have uh, something going all the time. Serotonin. It's it's like that shit that you watch. It's like the Jerry Springer stuff and this one's bitching on that. Hell no. Mm -mm. I don't like to live it. I like to watch some of it. No, no. I don't even. It just makes me irritated it does and then i smoke more when i'm irritated and it's cold and then that means i have to go out into the cold more Mm. so anyhow real we're going to do something different tomorrow because after reading all this about mr marshall i was done i was i was truly truly done Mm -hmm. and um so my intention barring and foreseen with what is it's cold and my knees my one She's knee hurting. i am hurting but my knee wants to buckle with me and i've had that i ended up in physical therapy for like six weeks the other time <laughs> She's i'd rather fell not out. well She's it just buckles fell out multiple times with it. it buckles <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, i'm having to use kid as a cane right now. here mom here's your cane oh hell no i don't need no cane i got a kid get over on this side um <laughs> anyhow yes, ma'am. what what my intention to uh to talk about tomorrow is mm. the um oh my goodness i can't remember if it's the hall of knowledge i think it was yeah. hang on just a second i'll tell you hall of records uh. that is supposed to be hidden beneath beneath the sphinx beneath the sphinx Yes, and this is this involves Edgar Casey and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, I've been working on that one most of the day mm. because the real. I don't know, I, I don't know. Now, do I believe I, as far as the Illuminati and some of these other things, and even as far as the eye symbolism? Yes, I get that. Mm-hmm. But as far as dude being involved in all that and bringing forth all that, he no. would have been, let me tell you, he'd have been squashed like a bug under somebody's shoe by now. Yeah, pretty much. There, There's absolutely no way in hell that they would have <clears throat> let him breathe no. a word of this. No, not at all. So. He would have been, <laughs> he would have been just. <laughs> right. And even as far as the reptilians, do I believe in the reptilians? I yes. do. Lizard people. Yeah, but as far as, do I believe no. in brain parasites? Yes. yes. Toxoplasma gondi. It's We've already done a cup on that. that. But now, as far as these things and his take on them and stuff, no, like I said, I think dude is full of shit. Yeah, I think he was full of shit, too. Time. It sounded like it, at least. And it's okay to sit there and call somebody out on this. But there's there are people that are followers of his Mm. that oh my god i mean if you said something like that if you dared uh speak ill of him you would have problems that's a cult people that's a cult and so no well i never did get around doing the the jim jones thing because that one is intensive no it was like you know anyhow (laughs) the reverend jim 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 Jones. jones I was a kid Doug. when that happened, and it was horrific. It's still horrific. Doug Dimmidome. Home of, the, home of Dimsdale's... D- something Doug Dimmidome. I don't know. <laughs> You're over there muttering at this point. Anyhow, if his, mind, a, his mind is blown. It's, yeah. you know, I will, you know, pop him in the head and see if a real sense pops out. If you've had experiences with supernatural, paranormal encounters, UFOs, aliens, cryptids, fuck the vrills, uh, if you've... Very odd parents. <laughs> Do you like very odd parents? If you've got local, regional family myths, legends, seriously, if you do know about this Donald Marshall character and you have a different take on him, mm. any of that, send me an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with the vrills for a while. I'm ready to move on. <laughs> And how long have you spent studying on this? Uh, like over weeks? a week. Over a week, yeah. It's over a week. I thought it was like two weeks. Nah, I don't. Well, maybe. I don't know. Anyhow. I could have sworn it was like two weeks. I'm over it. A week and a half. I'm over it. 
Yeah. I've got a moon in Gemini. There are different things that's in Gemini right now. It's like, okay, I'm full. Next, on to the next one. I'm going to be paranoid about brain sucking parasites. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about earwigs. God, I hate. Not like, the, the, the ones was... that are over in different countries, not the ones that are just spoopy looking here. Oh, the ones that are spoopy looking over here. Like, literally, as a child, biggest fear, one of those crawling into my ears. I used to call them latter day bugs. Mm mm. Because they were just, they weren't everywhere until several years ago. Mm. It's interesting. Anyhow, thank you for sharing coffee with us. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Yes. Know that you're loved. Mm. Yes. And watch out for vrills. If it, carry a big boot with you. Car- Smash those things. Carry a helmet. Well, that too. A, bo- a giant ass biohazard suit. Don't encourage people. People's already out there doing that stuff. I'd say. I'm perfectly fine with that. Oh my God. Anyhow. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that little notification button. Yes. Don't let the cats shit in your shoe. Bye. I'm still pissed.